right, and welcome to the first ever episode of Owl Spiritual. My name is Christian Brito, and while I'm a board-certified behavior analyst, what we're going to be doing on this channel and this podcast is we're going to be talking about spirituality, emotional, mental, physical health, as well as just general positivity and trying to change the narrative that's going on in the world right now. And so what I want to do with this first ever episode is kind of give you an introduction into who I am and what better way than to share an interview and a podcast that I was on in which they asked me about my transformational change and my path to where I am now. And so what happened is I went on a podcast called The Infinite Cup, uh, and that podcast is hosted by Robert, and he had me on and talked a little bit about my change, my path in life to get to where I am with my mind, body, and soul connection, as well as kind of talking about spirituality topics, mental health, and using the law of attraction. And so without further ado, welcome to Our Spiritual, and let's check out this interview on the Infinite Cup podcast. Yeah, so you mentioned earlier, um, you know, off camera, you're talking about your title a little bit. So just give everybody just like a brief, you know, introduction, just how um, this all got started for you and how you got into the law of attraction in the first place. Man, this is my whole introduction to the spiritual realm in general. And I'm kind of a big believer in this, that a lot of people are introduced to the light because they go through the dark. Oh, yeah. Right. They go through the difficult times that lead them to the the beauty of the world. And so I have to go all the way back to, um, it, I'm going to be vulnerable right from the beginning, but uh, my divorce process was probably something that really opened up something inside me that I didn't ever really analyze, right? I never really went within. Yeah. And so what ended up happening is my approach to this whole realm has been one of mind, body, and spirit all of those things at once. So anybody that knows my story, not only did I go through a divorce process, but I went through um, what at that time was called a clinical depression. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they want my, I, I decided to go to therapy and all of that. And that really started kind of the process for me. I, um, you see me here now for those watching, I'm probably a little bit overweight, but I at the time was uh, 376 pounds, morbidly obese. Um, and so all of this transformation hasn't just been spirit. It's been body, body, mind, and spirit. So I've gone to therapy and I've done, read the books and done all of these things for my mind. Then I started to do all the things for my body and, and start to go to the gym and eat healthy and took that to an extreme and then started to focus on the spirit. Honestly, um, when my best friend and probably the most important person in my life started to introduce me into this other avenue that I started to really connect with immediately because I saw the intermingling of all of these things together, right? The body, the awesome. mind, the spirit. And um, it all started with that basically. So it's been a variety of things in terms of the spirituality <laughs> realm. Um, yeah. I can't even necessarily like pinpoint what my focus has been in that just really just connecting and going within and taking the time to grow and become more, you know, more spirit and less body, right? Not to exactly. say that they don't work together, but to yes, try it's a to, perspective. Yeah, yeah, totally get you. And Oh my gosh, man, I can't imagine, you know, holding on to that much, you know, physical weight, not only what you're talking about on the physical, right, but then also what's happening on the emotional and the spiritual components of your life. And it's just cool to see that all come together and create that transformation for you. You know, um, I think a lot of people, you know, listening and watching right now are, are carrying that weight right now, you know, if not physically, um, you know, energetically on their shoulders as that baggage, you know, and that's exactly what you're talking about. You know, that's the work that we're all doing. Uh, I look at it more like shifting the perspective from that body or the lower self, the ego and, and going within and identifying with that soul, that infinite self that is within all of us. And, you know, it takes some time and, uh, you know, you're spot on with, you know, the suffering because that's what opens us up. Right. So thank you for, you know, being vulnerable because that's what we all need. And you're inspiring others, you know, to do the same thing because we have to clear that out in order to really create that reality that we want. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
that's kind of been, you know, it's not always the case, right? It's not always the case that people have to go through the dark to get to the light or have to go through these trials. But every time I've personally ever had something terrible or difficult or challenging come at me in my life, and I look back and reflect, and this is why I'm so happy being vulnerable with, vulnerable with people is, man, those trials, that crappy feeling, whatever I was feeling in that moment, always came with a better blessing afterwards yeah. and always was followed by not, not just everything happens for a reason, but everything happens for a beautiful reason. Like whether it's my story being able to help someone else or just like seeing the fruits of my own transformation and how it blessed my life, <laughs> not even worrying about how it could potentially impact somebody else, but just how it affected me and like how, Every single time, it doesn't even matter. Like I can pinpoint all these critical, what I thought were awful moments in my life and trace them directly to the beauty afterwards. So Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's the, what I like to call the cosmic view, right? We all get trapped in you know, our problems and the ego, the suffering. And at the end of the day, if you just take that moment, that breath, you know, that's why meditation is so important. Whatever technique we can you know, really utilize to get into that cosmic view and understand what's really going on because there's this, you know, cosmic puzzle all coming together and we all have to do our part to come together as one. And that's the work that is necessary. And I know for me, you know, the darkness is a part of it. You know, you can't have the light without the dark. So everybody has their own way to transmute that. And that's just the exciting part about human existence. You know, we're all doing that work together. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, um, and I'm not sure how much of this, I, I imagine you believe a good chunk of this, but this is the, uh, this is the life I chose before I came here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It takes a lot of, you know, willpower and energy just to have that you know, perspective, you know, of looking at it from that way. And it's exactly right. You know, the upgrades are continuous and this is an infinite process. You know, I get a lot of questions. I'm sure you do too about the law of attraction and whether it's real or whether people, I think people just getting into it, you know, are very curious because they get trapped into whatever box they are stuck in and their personality and their job title. And they just want that basic freedom and that basic happiness that we're all after. And I think it's powerful when you start really putting it to a practice, you know? So that's kind of what I would ask you, like, what was that, you know, did, was it affirmations? Was it, you know, something, maybe a, a, a book or what was that kind of that one thing that just kind of turned it into a practice for you and made it a catalyst into your life? So I would say that I've been using this practice before I ever knew what it was, right? Yeah. yeah I've definitely. been using this practice for a long time. And for, for those of you that maybe know me, and I'll kind of introduce this a little bit now, um, aside from all the spirituality, I am consider myself a businessman by trade, right? I have always kind of looked up to the Earl Nightingales and the strangest secret and stuff like that, which now is being rebranded as this is law of attraction type concepts. Yeah. But even if you don't view it from the spiritual or energetic outcome, right? You don't view it from yeah. the universe. It's, it's, you can view it behaviorally, right? You can yeah. view it as this is me setting a goal, a measurable, achievable goal that I'm then going to create my thoughts, beliefs, and then the actions that are going to lead me into that goal. So the affirmations is really just the antecedent. You're approaching the thoughts and the beliefs and the feelings and the emotion side of it. Then you have to do the second part, which is the action. And then kind of just believing and having the mindset and being that person that believes they can have this X thing in their life. That's removing any sort of the energetic or universal or spiritual concept behind it. But then when you add the other side of it and you say, we are all energy and we're obviously all connected in some way, not just to the universe, but to each other. Right. And you take this kind oh, yeah. of quantum approach to it all. You're, you, you can mesh those two things, the goals and the, you know, the mindset side of it, mesh it with the other, that quantum perspective and realize that they do go hand in hand. But even if you didn't, even if for some reason you didn't believe in this, universe all being connected or anything like that and you're just like a businessman okay cool the law of attraction can still work for you you just might have to rebrand it and name it something different <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting to see it uh uh you know creep up in the mainstream and being used in uh, business and normal things and i agree with right. you you know i've been using 
uh, the law of attraction or, or affirmations and things way before I knew what they were. And I think a lot of this, you know, power is being used by other forces to help, you know, keep us in control and keep us in this lower, you know, vibration as well. Right. Um, we, I don't want to get, you know, into conspiracy right. theories or get all crazy right now. I'm just saying, uh, you know, with, there's always two sides of the coin, right? So the more, yeah. you know, we know about this stuff, you can always imagine what's going on to, on the other side. Um, anyways, I think the most important part, I agree with you, what you said 100%. And the most important part that I just want to kind of reinforce is the taking action part, because I feel like people really get it, you know, they understand the law of attraction. And it's a concept that is not easy to understand. It's a lot more, you know, challenging to put it into a practice. So that's just what I want to stress home is, you know, you have your affirmations, you're putting into a practice, and you really have to have that commitment into your life and create that accountability, you know, as, as you've done, obviously, to make it to that next level and get that reality that you're searching for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I usually just kind of frame it as your thoughts, beliefs, feelings create the action, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you look at it um, kind of going back. So uh, as I mentioned before, I'm a behavior analyst. That means I'm a, a board certified behavior analyst. And so your thoughts, feelings, and actions are internal behavior that you then need to create the external environment behavior, right? Yeah. And if you just have that internal behavior, yeah, maybe maybe it'll happen. But you have to also, the person that truly believes in whatever their thoughts and beliefs are will have the action that goes with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, I like what we were talking earlier. It's like it's more like a science now. And it's more brought into a recipe that is tried and true and it's obvious and it's out there now. So just go for it. You know, for people that are listening and watching right now and you, you know, you've heard about the law of attraction. You're just wondering what to do next. You know, I get that question all the time. It's like, you have to take action, put this into a practice into your life. There's no way around it. So um, I just wanted to really drive that home because that's like the biggest thing that I see missing when the conversation about the law of attraction comes up. And it's something that I know the, it's like, it's only as powerful as what you put into it sort of thing. That's kind of how I look at it, you know, based yeah. on your energy, your output, you know, that you're giving Absolutely. it, you know, so your belief system is orchestrating all of this. So the more that we can dig into this, the more your potential will begin to expand. And it's just exciting because every time, you know, I thought that I, you know, created something or manifested something in my life, the universe has always brought something more in, you know, and triumphed everything that I ever thought was possible. So it's more of a process of kind of getting ourself out of the way, those thoughts, those limiting beliefs, and letting the universe come in and fill you up. Right. Yeah. And I, I like the model and, and there's different, everybody has a different school of thought, but my school of thought is that we're co-creators in this universe. And we have come here and we have this universal disposition of this is going to happen for us, but we also have some say in it, right? We also yeah. have a lot of power to create within it. And, you know, the universe will help us get things if it's in our best interest. And we, we have to sometimes go out there and get it as well. So what you were saying about that vibration and matching that vibration energetically, someone that's truly matching a vibration energetically is not acting as if they're acting as is right exactly. and that alone creates the action because yeah. if i for example with my weight loss i am not at my goal yet i'm damn close already but <laughs> i started at 376 pounds and i wanted to get down to 180 i'm at 199 right now mm -hmm. and i started acting as is in terms of I'm 180 pounds. And what does that mean? That means, I, well, now I have a home gym, but at the time I was going to the gym about five to six times a week. Uh, I'm tracking all my intake, which I don't longer need to do because I can just kind of do it in my head now. Yeah. Um, and so that is just like an example of acting as is. I'd have to take all the action, but I already believed it was going to happen. You get what I'm saying? Like I already believed and it started to associate with this is the person that I am going to be because it's the person that I am. Yes. Exactly. And that's, that's getting the separation and we can, you know, talk about the perspective because this is when we get kind of beyond that linear time and you get into this fifth dimensional energy, which is based off of love and based off of that direct action. And I just love, uh, you know, the story because there's nothing more profound than just weight loss, right? 
um, as far as the physical change, you know, yeah. and that is huge, brother. Congratulations. Um, I cannot you. just say that enough for you. Uh, yeah, you are obviously going to create that 180 in no time and then some. <laughs> so that's just a cool story. And for people listening, watching like this, you know, anything is possible. I mean, this is something that the power of the law of attraction, the power of energy, you know, is literally infinite. And it's just about us utilizing it and taking that action. Like you can use the affirmations all you want, but it's like, who, you know, are you going to show up to the gym? Like you're talking about, who's going right. to do that for you, right? Five to six times a week, nobody's going to, you know, hop on the treadmill for you sort of thing. So that's the one thing that I just um, can't stress enough is, you know, putting in that work because a lot of people just negate that fact or get into some spiritual bypassing or claim that they are too good for it or whatever. And really this is the same work, you know, the same journey that we're all doing. And I love what you said about co-creating because I cannot, you know, stress that enough as well. Oh my gosh, we are, you know, you're not doing this by yourself. You know, it's, uh, it's something that you're tapping into. I mean, I get, I can't take all the credit. I know you, you know, can't take all the credit <laughs> right? Absolutely not. for the things that you've accomplished. Right. And like I said earlier, it's like, you know, we have to get out of the way, let the universe fill you up. Then you have that power, that clarity, the confidence to really take charge of your life. Yeah. And like you mentioned there, Robert, you know, that, that source that we're tapping into is that loving energy. And what people forget about that loving energy, we focus so much on love as being this external process, right? Yeah. But so much about creating your life starts, truly starts, that whole belief system truly starts with loving internally, right? Exactly. Once I was able to love Christian, Mm -hmm. then the thoughts and beliefs aligned with this is all of the things that I can now do because I love myself. Yes. And whether that meant my mental health, my spiritual health, my physical health, my emotional health, all of that, and my relationships externally, being able to love others, it's got to start at the source because, man, how can I love you, Robert, if I don't love myself? Like, it's it, not it possible. It's, it's not possible. Not and so possible. you see all of these issues that we have, whether it's, us as individuals or us as a collective consciousness, yeah. so much of it starts with the inability to love ourselves, believe that we deserve love, and, and those limiting beliefs. And a lot of the times they start with love. I agree. I agree a lot. This is, uh, you know, 80 to 90% of the programming, you know, because of our mind and the belief system that's structured around, you know, who we thought we were supposed to be, you know, and all that pressure and all that buildup accumulates and it manifest as you know uh this overeating or something toxic in our life whatever that you know habit might be that's negative that over time creates that unhappiness in our life and that's not our true self you know that's just a reminder i want to throw out there too and i'm sure you felt it more than other people you know with that tremendous weight on your physical body it's like you can you're almost like a different person it's like you, you feel uh you know probably the shift more than others as far as the transformation within yourself i'm just saying the real true soul you know the real person who we are is not the you know programmed uh, standard american version that the you know man wants us to be <laughs> so right. it's something much more expansive than that and it really just comes back down to your belief systems and that's really what unlocks the power of the law of attraction and i, I could not agree with you more when you were talking about love because you have to have that for yourself and man the self limiting beliefs are real and the self-worth is one of the biggest ones that I see, you know, through coaching, and I'm sure you see a lot too. Um, you know, just the self worth overall as a self limiting belief has been programmed in our society. And like I said, you are born with that abundance. You are born as this expansive, loving being. And it's really just sad to see, you know, what's happening on our planet right now. And it's just at the same time really cool to see this great awakening and people, you know, like I said earlier, start to be into stuff like the law of attraction as a mainstream businessman or a mainstream anything, because it's just awesome to see it finally, uh, you know, how do I say it? it's finally a catalyst, you know, for the modern America now. It's finally appreciated, you know. It's, I feel like it's being um, accepted as, you know, a mainstream tool to really be a happy, healthy person. Yeah. And hopefully that kind of awakening is not limited to one particular practice or concept or anything like that. And I think we're starting to see more and more, that, especially in 2020, this kind of great awakening and this ascension hopefully of you know this this human consciousness in general um but a lot of times like going back to the beginning that has to go through the dark before it comes to the light 
and you're seeing um, what a lot of people are assuming is just darkness in this world. And yeah, maybe we have to go through that to finally have some semblance of coming together as a human consciousness and not just practice the law of attraction, but practice humanity, practice, you know, a (laughs) mindful human consciousness. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's the shift that's happening, uh, you know, physically from, you know, our old self, which is based in emotions, a lot of reactivity, you know, that's happening. And that's the darkness and coming through to that prefrontal cortex, you know, the real human self um, is being activated through this mindfulness practice, through this meditation, through the work that we're all doing. Um, And like I said, the law of attraction, yes, even meditation, you know, these words, these keywords are slowly being accepted by the mainstream. And it's starting to become just a normal thing to talk about mental health and to talk about, you know, meditation and that's honestly been the missing link for the longest time. Like I said earlier, you know, our society doesn't accept those things in our current, you know, norm. And that's really what we need to do is be talking about depression, talking about anxiety, talking about all of these things, you know, that have been condemned and really just bring that to the surface because obviously that was a huge catalyst to your awakening, huge catalyst to my awakening and almost everybody that I interview. So I'm just saying to me, it's a kind of like a natural human process and the more we can just let it flow rather than resist it. That's really the the recipe there because when we start, you know, just really getting into that surrender process and the restriction, you know, the resistance, sorry, only comes from pain. So that's just the key word I wanted just people to take away there. It's like, if you have that pain, if you have that suffering and you're stuck and everything, know that it's just the resistance that you're putting up to it. That's creating that. Right. Um, I want to touch quickly, Robert, if you don't mind, on yeah. the the mental health side of things that you just brought up. Because yeah, please do. Um, I, you know, as a mental health professional, there's probably nothing that's more dear to my heart than we're talking about an issue that was a problem before. Yeah, and is to me the most concerning problem in 2020 that nobody's talking about. Because if you look at, you know, this is, it can be a little bit difficult to talk about, but the whole point is to remove the stigma a little bit. Yeah. Suicide in 2019 was a top 10 cause of death in the United States. Okay. So we're talking about, you know, you've got cancer, you've got heart disease, but we're talking about suicide is amongst that list. That is absurd to me. And then during the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw an almost 900% increase in calls to mental health and crisis hotlines that are a whole bunch of issues feeding into that people being stuck at home people not working people not having income people not having human connections right and all of these things are leading to a huge spike that has continued in this country in terms of mental health and yet we have this stigma about talking about mental health about talking about depression Um, not to get like super on it, but like, it's still filtered in our society. If you go to use like hashtag anxiety, it'll get blocked and the post won't get posted. Mm -hmm. And you, we can't talk about it because we're ashamed to talk about our mental health and our mental health has to be approached the same way we approach our physical health. Yeah. Right. If I'm going to the gym, what's the problem with going to a therapist to see my mental health and and have somebody help me and guide me? What's the problem with talking to my friend about the challenges in my life? And we stigmatize it so damn much that people are literally taking a different way out because they don't have a solution. And that kills me because it, it, that needs to be normalized across society immediately just like the spirituality stuff. Yeah. You're starting to see some of these things being normalized. Meditation is being normalized. The law of attraction is being normalized where before, Hey, that's hippy dippy crap. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like, no, like these are practices that we need to be incorporating just like we incorporate anything else into our life and normalize and remove the stigma. And, And that's huge for me is removing that stigma behind that. Yes, it needs to be done. Thank you for doing that work. Oh my gosh, I can't yeah, think of a more important thing right now. And it's something you're right that will never, you know, come up to the mainstream as far as like the cover of magazines or being, you know, we live in this Instagram, you know, kind of fashion world or whatever. And people are just basically obsessed, you know, with the surface, you know, it's a very shallow consciousness right now. And that's what the Great Awakening is all about is, is going deeper, right? And 
those issues need to be brought up. And it's something that, I mean, I could talk to you about this all day. I'm sure we can go on and we'll, we'll hopefully have to record another podcast for this because this is a good topic. And I'm not sure if everybody's ready to hear it, honestly, especially the autism and the rates, you know, one in 20, I believe are in the East, uh, East coast right now. And some other things, you know, basically what I would call, um, a chemical side you know what happens because there's the physical side with our life and the food and what's happening with our air and just our environment and then there's what you're talking about right which is the mental health and it's all created this real chaotic um recipe for uh, you know instability is what i would see right now if i were to just sum it up you know it's the physical cells aren't being able to do what they're supposed to do in the human body the environment is not capable for it and now we have a society that just doesn't accept it, even if you want to talk about it, you know? Um, right. So it's, it's a system that is, you know, meant to fail. And that's exactly why we see a lot of the problems that we're seeing right now. And if we just go home and, you know, really address this at the root, then a lot of this stuff would go away. But the, again, the problem is we have that shallow consciousness and people just want to cover it up or, um, you know, pretend like it's okay. And eventually that stuff has to come out. You know, that's what a lot of this work is. And, you know, I get a lot of questions about shadow work and everything. And it's people, you know, not wanting to talk about the, you know, depression they had as a kid or a traumatic event that happened in their life. And that's exactly what's keeping them from experiencing, you know, the upgrade that they're looking for in their life. So it's exactly the work we need to be doing. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> you hit it on the head. Yeah. Um, so if is there anything, um, you know, that like, so now that people, you know, are, are listening and watching and just to spread, I mean, there are people, you know, suffering out there, you know, just give them a little, you know, two cents from your perspective as far as where they can take action in their life. Uh, if we're talking about the, the mental health approach, I, I just highly recommend that people treat their mind the same way that they treat growth and wanting to change in any area. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. it starts with the... It, it starts with a decision to say, hey, I admit that I need some sort of help in this area, which yeah. is a very difficult process to admit to yourself, hey, I, can, I, I need some help here. And then Definitely. the second step is allowing yourself, loving yourself enough, enough. If, if you're struggling to love yourself, loving yourself enough to admit you need change and go out and seek it. Yeah. And I highly recommend you know, if it's for mental health, the starting steps can be to seek some help. For, it can be from a professional. It can be from a friend. Yeah. Um, but just some sort of guidance because we often rely on that love from, from others to be able yep. to guide us. Yeah. And then start to go within. It's, it's perfectly natural to kind of mesh these different things, mesh that spiritual side with the mental health side and start to connect with divine love, yeah. right? It'll really, if you can, if you can pull that love into yourself from another source, um, is also something that I would highly recommend. Um, and the reasons that I'm saying all of this is my recommendations are not because this is what you'll find in a textbook. It's because this is what I experienced, right? Awesome. This is the path that I took. Awesome. And, and so everybody needs their own, you know, tweaked approach, right? Because we're all individuals. Um, but I, that would be my, my goal Beautiful. is that you can admit and allow and then go seek. I agree. I agree. The first step is, you know, the conscious choice within yourself to want that change. You know, a lot of people, you know, you have to make that from within. That's one thing that will not happen from the outside. So if you, you know, have people suffering in your life and you, you know, you want to help them, just know that you have to put that energy in yourself as well and be that example, be that shining light. So when that person wants to make the change, they will come to you. You know, that's a little thing I would just throw onto that because I know it's happening in the household somewhere, the younger generation. Like I said, I just know because the nutrition, <laughs> they're not having uh, access to healthy nutrition and on top of that, the environment. And then let alone all this Cornerona, you know, mask stuff. Uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's created a world where now, you know, people are just afraid for human contact all around, you know? And that's exactly what they wanted. And it just frustrates me more than anything. And we have to remember, again, that love is that answer. And there's so much power and transformation through that, that connection through our fellow brothers and sisters. I mean, there's just no way around it. So we all need that. We're tribal people and no yep. uh, you know, government official or governor or whoever can take that away from us. So Absolutely. just just remember that because um, you're right. The statistics are crazy when the coronavirus hit and people, oh my gosh, are 
having panic attacks that they never had before, having anxiety they never thought they had, and depression and all of these things coming to the surface because they're sitting at home and it all came to the surface. <laughs> you know, um, it's happening on a worldwide level and we're all dealing with it. So definitely seek help. Definitely, you know, just throw that hand out there and I'm sure someone will grab it. Hopefully that's what my intention as well with all the content that I produce, you know, it's hopefully uplifting and hopefully positive enough for somebody to, you know, feel inspired to reach out to me and, and in need. And I just get DMS every day about that. So something if you feel the need please don't hesitate to just reach out yeah, yeah. and I, I think you know what we can do as kind of these conscious creators as well is not only normalize like we mentioned but to you know pave the road to hey this is not only the way to do it but these are places that you can get it done this is our you know doing exactly yeah. what you're doing right now robert which yeah. is hey you know, how would you do that? That question that you just asked me is perfect for anyone listening that might be struggling with that exact issue because it's like, okay, cool. Like this is the steps that I could potentially take and I can, you know, log online and say, you know, st start typing in with, you know, remote online therapy or therapy near me and, and, and start to actually go through the process of what's now hopefully going to be more normalized and less stigmatized and already have these paved roads by people that are pointing in the right direction so that people don't, you know, that top 10 statistic can stop being a top, a top 10 statistic, hopefully. I agree, I agree. It's it's all coming together uh, synergis synergistically <laughs> with the awareness and then the actual practice, you know, because we need the nutrition, we need the body to be online as soon as the support is there uh, mentally and the person is willing to do it. Then you need the nutrition, you need someone, you know, who knows what they're talking about to really bring all of the body and its organs online because I feel like a lot of those mental disorders create physical damage over time. And once the organs are functioning, once everything's back online, you feel motivated. It's just a matter of time, you know, before those self healing mechanisms get turned on. And then before you know it, you're really creating that life that you want. And it's really important work. You know, I want to stress that a lot because the spiritual awakening that's happening right now has everything to do with mental health. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, this, transformation that's happening you know everything has to come to the surface so i know a lot of people you know they get into spirituality especially in the beginning and you start talking about chakras and fun stuff and it all sounds wonderful until you know this past trauma comes to the surface and you're just overwhelmed right <laughs> right so that's just one thing uh, yeah i just had to throw out there because I, I get a lot of those questions and it's it's really fun on the surface and i just want to prepare people you know for that moment because it's going to happen, you know, whether it's in a meditation and you're not prepared or whether it comes up through something conscious, I don't know. I'm just telling people that it's going to come up, you know, that's the work that we have to do is clear all that stuff out. And you'd be surprised, um, you know, what kind of trauma or emotions get really trapped in your conscious that you're not really aware about um, that are triggered by a person or a food or a movie or whatever happens in the reality. And then before you know it, it's on the surface for you to deal with. And if you don't have that love, you don't have that, you know, biology and that chem chemistry on point, then it's going to be challenging. So got to dial all those things in so we can really be our best self, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And then you kind of, like you mentioned, you kind of take all of these tools that you've learned, right? And when it does, when you do start to do shadow work and something pops up or, you know, when you are focusing on these energy centers in your body and you see, hey, you know, I've got blockage here, you already have all of the tools to start to tackle what can, you know, for somebody else be a difficult situation. But if you prepare yourself mentally for these things and you know, hey, this is the process before you go into it, then you kind of have a, a leg up on the on the process. It, not to say it's going to be easy, but <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. No, it's not uh, guaranteeing anything here. It's definitely um, something you have to put in the work for. Uh, that inner yeah. work is crucial. And you know what? I, I talk about this a lot, and I, you know, I want to give people the analogy. It's like you know, even if we could do it for you, you know what I mean. Even if there was, let's say, a magic pill or something, right? Like with your weight loss, you know, think about what you would have been missing. You know what I mean? Like you said, all those dots that you're connecting to the cosmic view and why, you know, you were suffering on the surface. And it's like all those experiences, all those lessons would have been missed. And I think the takeaway here is you really have to just get involved with that journey and 
kind of let go of the expectation or whatever you think is going to happen at the end of that tunnel and just be in that moment, you know, really appreciate it because there are just huge lessons and realizations that happen throughout that process. And it's more like shedding, uh, you know, those layers and really unschooling or deprogramming than it is anything else. So that um, you don't want to happen overnight. <laughs> it would be very overwhelming and it would be very jarring to our consciousness. So um, enjoy the ride people, you know, enjoy the ride. <laughs> you have to, you, it, that's, that's the whole part of the human experience is the experience, right? Um, and you have to love the process because the process never stops, whether in this lifetime or the next, the process never stops. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about the spiritual or the physical or the mental, the process never stops. Once I hit that weight goal, that doesn't mean I can stop, you know, uh, just because I meditate today doesn't mean I can't do, I'm not going to do it tomorrow. Like that process is never going to stop. We're always learning. We're always growing. We are these spiritual beings that have to continue to learn and grow. This is, this is our earth school. You know what I'm saying? So, Oh yeah. Yep. I love that saying earth school and unconditional love is the lesson. That's it. That's what it all is. Cause those layers, like we talked about earlier in the past self was all rooted in a programmed conditional love and the self work wasn't there and the loving of yourself wasn't there. And there's this void, you know, that we all have to some degree. The question is, how are you feeling? You know, are you feeling that void with, positivity and you know walks in nature and really restructuring your subconscious and getting into this place where you're changing and creating the life that you want or are you in that victim mindset you know just complaining about everybody all the time and throwing everybody <laughs> under the bus for whatever thing happened in your life instead of taking that responsibility yourself so that's kind of the the switch that i talk about you know going from the consumer to the creator you know we we very much are all on that path together and one by one, we're all taking that leap, you know, of faith going from that consumer consciousness into the creators that we truly are. Yeah. So much beautiful in life can happen when you start to have that creator mindset. When you shift that mindset, Robert, like, I'm not sure how familiar you are with, you know, the placebo effect, for example, right? The power oh, yeah. of your mind to just heal itself. If you want to yeah. just look at this purely, purely scientifically, right? Yeah. Why do you think that, for example, depression medications have to have so many double and triple blind studies? Because just the concept of, hey, this will help is so strong, particularly for those chemicals in our brain, our serotonin, our dopamine, um, and the creation of those things because we are creating that reality. Hey, this is going to help. So it does because we already believe it alone yep. so that process of choosing going going back to the beginning of this conversation choosing to be this co-creator in our in our world um, allows us to do so just choosing it and that belief system man the power of your mind is is unlimited because it's tapped into an unlimited source if you really want to tap into it it's unlimited and so we can, you know, if you want to go all the way to, you know, quantum healing and, and, and healing yourself, there's so many things that you can do that we don't talk about because it's not normalized, but it, it's entirely possible. And this is not, th these are things that are, it's not fictional pseudoscience anymore. There's published research articles on quantum physics, quantum healing on all of these concepts and, and the placebo effect and the ability to heal yourself. And that's just tapping into one little percent of what we can create in our, in our reality. Um, and it's, yeah. if you start going down that rabbit hole, it's really fun. Oh, it's so fun. Oh my gosh. And I get that all the time. Pseudoscience, this, this and that. I mean, the, the science community and quantum physics is just like you said, beginning to catch up with what I would call yoga or Eastern metaphysics. And it's something that has been around, you know, since before time. And it's really cool to see um, our modern science catch up to it. And I just look at it like they're just different words, you know, uh, the word quantum, you know, is kind of the catch word right now. And people are into that. And it's really fun and exciting. And based on different theories, and I'm sure we'll have another word in another five years, you know, and all of that will not um, take place for what was created, you know, thousands of years ago. And it's so cool to see it catch up, even the law of attraction, you know, it's, it's just a word, you know, it's a buzzword yeah. and people use it and it's great. Uh, no judgment again. I'm just saying it's really fun to see it, um, you know, catch up full circle right here and with the mainstream media and science communities starting to accept this. And 
before you know it, we're all in that collective awakening together. That's kind of what's happening. And look how fast, you know, it's happening. That's one thing with just technology alone or what's happening just as our whole as a collective, you know, it's really speeding up fast and it's undeniable at this point. So, you know, the age of Aquarius is here or whatever term you want to use the golden age, you know, it's all speeding up. I look at it just like a circle without getting too specific about it right now. This It's just a circle and we're on that ascending, you know, wheel on the way up, right? We can all feel that, that pull towards this higher, you know, more expansive energy. And it's a beautiful process when you really just let go and let it, let it come through you. Exactly. Man. Awesome, man. Um, uh, I just want to ask you any other tips besides the law of attraction that you just want to throw out that were like maybe a, a big factor to your weight loss or something that just really helped you along the way? Uh, it's the decision to change. And this, again, going back yeah. all the way from the beginning, back when I was yeah. just, you know, reading into business books and stuff like that, mm-hmm. a true change happens with the decision. I learned this from Tony Robbins back in the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and a true change just happens with that decision because a real committed decision is unwavering. And so that kind of just ties in with the belief of this is who I am. Yep. Right. And honestly, that decision should change whether you're trying to change your physical body, whether you're trying to change your mental health, whether you are trying to um, become a more enlightened individual and connect more to source and connect and go more within and, and be more mindful doesn't matter what area you are trying to approach it has to have some process of that action that you take that you were mentioning before and that action can often just be as simple as the belief and the decision right because yes. sometimes just that decision and then letting go and letting love um, can cause the whole chain of reaction sometimes it takes more work than that and you got to put in and, and put in the grind and stuff like that and I think each scenario is is different but that decision to whatever it is that you need to approach if you're you know hey i'm struggling with my mental health you know having enough love for yourself to make the decision to seek help or if you're struggling with your physical health having enough of a decision to hey i'm going to go consult you know a fitness professional i'm going to consult my primary care physician whatever it might take i'm going to go read a book on this subject i'm going there's there's a lot of resources out there and a lot of people who have already done it regardless of what it is that you want out of life, you know, there's somebody's done it already. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah. all you have to do is make the decision to, Hey, I'm going to choose to do this. Yeah. I agree. Tony Robbins is probably the biggest pioneer about all this stuff before it got popular, you know, and it's cool hearing you throw his name out there. I haven't thought about him in a while. Really cool guy. Um, I agree with you hundred percent. I'm trying to think for my life as well. It's the same thing. And a lot of people, it's like a wall right? That you hit when you just don't feel good anymore, whether it's physical with your weight, whether it's, you know, your energy, your output, whether it's the clarity of mind, whatever that thing is that's ailing you, or even, you know, wanting a soulmate or a partner in your life, whatever that thing is. And the law of attraction usually comes in right then, right? When you want something. So I just want to mention that because we were all, you know, hitting that wall in some degree. For me, it was my stomach and stomach problems. I was diagnosed with IBS and a lot of stomach issues and just feel terrible, you know, from the foods that I was eating. And you really have to, you know, I had to be in that place of just sheer pain and misery before I drew the line. And I was like, you know what, no more. And I can remember that exact moment. And it was life changing, you know, in that one moment, I did exactly what you're talking about and decided that I had to change and all those things that I did prior to that day, I didn't do going forward, you know, I did new things. So um, I just want to throw that word out there as far as new things for people, like whatever you're doing right now, you just got to drop it and do something new, circulate yeah. new energy. Um, yeah. We all get stuck in these ruts and especially with social media and people are just basically ruled by the subconscious, you know, repeating thoughts over and over and over. And <laughs> I can't tell you how important it is to just circulate that new energy. Um, the new, the new affirmation, the new belief, yes. the new behavior, whatever it is. As So going yes. back to behaviorally, right? Yeah. Behavior analytics say that if I want to reduce a behavior or change a behavior, mm-hmm. what do I need to do? I need to have a replacement behavior. Exactly. So that replacement behavior for you was a new diet, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a new, a new way of living. But yes. you broke it down into these are all the new things. But in the process of having a new thing, you remove the old thing. That's, oh, yeah. that's what happens. So look at that from any way you want. In the process of having a new spirit, you shed 
the body, you shed the ego, you shed the old mind in the process of whatever it is that you want to create, right? If I want to love myself, I shed my limiting beliefs about myself, Yes. right? And so whatever it is that you're trying to incorporate in your life, you have to shed the old way of thought, but you do that with replacing it with the new behavior, the new thought, the new action, the new affirmation, whatever the new thing is, which you just mentioned. I agree. And you have to want, you have to um, level it up, you know, because the old self really clings to the past. You know, I just really have to stress that, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, oh wait, you're changing your diet. What happened to the cake? This kale tastes terrible, bro. What are you doing? You know, it's like, the old self is going to cling on, you know, to that thing because that's its source of happiness, you know? And I, I give that old self a little pat on the back and I'm like, it's okay, dude, I'm not having the cake right now. Let's just have the salad. It's all good. Maybe we'll have some cake later, you know? And like, you got to really talk to that old self, talk, you know, nurture that part of yourself that's freaking out. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, we can get into timelines and talk about it from that perspective as far as, you know, quantumly jumping into your future self. And that's kind of a, a vocabulary that is pretty common these days as well. I just want to say, you know, the biggest thing that I see and what I get questions about too, and I know you experienced it, is, you know, that old self just really clinging on to those old destructive habits. <laughs> but, you know, that, that destructive habit when you can, and now we're going to talk about time, I guess, but when you can live in the present moment and realize that past self doesn't exist anymore, that only exists as a memory, and then start to think of habit as something that you can create brand new from day one, it just takes time. And I, typically, the number that you'll hear is a new habit takes about 21 days to form. Yeah. Um, and you just start right there at that moment. Hey, you know, I right now, I'm going to enjoy this salad, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to enjoy the person that it's going to create. It's, it's, it's that, you know, both the short-term reinforcement and the long-term reinforcement of, hey, this is going to create a healthier, better me. And I'm going to enjoy it now. And I'm going to enjoy it in the future because yes. I'm no longer that person that suffers from IBS or I'm no longer that person that was 376 pounds. That, that doesn't matter. You know, yep. like exactly. that's not me anymore. Nope, not at all. It's um, all about embracing that new version of yourself, that upgraded version of yourself that it already is. And that's, yeah, time and time. And that's what I, you just described perfectly what I call the override mechanism, right? Like you hear that past self, you hear the voice, you hear the, the struggle, you know, whether it's this kale salad or whatever's happening. And then you have this override mechanism, you know, that new version of yourself taking over and you're, you're affirming, no, this is what I'm doing. This is the new me. This is you know, you better start loving this kale salad, <laughs> you know, like you reaffirm it and uh, slowly through the affirmations and through the work that you're doing. I agree with 21 days. I talk about that through my guided meditations and a lot of people that ask about the subconscious and affirmations in general. I always um, mention that as well, because it doesn't happen overnight. I think people just get caught up in expectations and they try a mantra or an affirmation once or twice and they have all these results that don't come into play. So Definitely um, just want to re-drive home that point there. 21 days is the minimum, I would say, to really restructure it completely for that you know, belief or that habit to not come back up to the surface. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and everything takes time because even after you incorporate that habit, you have to continue to identify with the new behavior, the new person, the new affirmation, the new thought, um, and tweak it as you go because, hey – you know, as I go, maybe I realize I don't love kale, but I do love spinach. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, so, you know, the, that little tweaks here and there can help the process as well. Figure out what works for you and life in general. Um, you know, some people, you know, maybe guided meditations don't work for you, but you love meditating with binaural beats and you throw on Robert's, you know, CD. And <laughs> Exactly. Everybody's got their own thing that floats their boat, right? I mean, I can't exactly. tell you how much... Um, you have to embrace the uniqueness of your journey. You know, that's really what I would say. Um, I get that all, all the time, almost every day, you know, and it's like the things that work for me are probably aren't going to work for you. You know, there's things that we can generalize, but there's a lot that we can't. So you really have to create that, you know, one-on-one -on -one practice. I know that's why, you know, all the work you do is so important with the counseling and, and the coaching and things, you know, that's just really important just to have that one-on-one -on -one time to really, you know, pinpoint exactly what's going on so you can get to that reality that you're looking for. No, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, yeah, man. No, this is great. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just end it on that note, man. This is awesome. I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, how can people, you know, find you? How can people look you up on the digital webs out there in the universe? 
the easiest way right now is both on TikTok and Instagram uh, at Owl Spiritual, O W L Spiritual. Um, you know, if you ask, I'll probably tell you what the owl means to me, but it's got a couple of specific things there that have tied into my spiritual journey. But Owl Spiritual on TikTok and Instagram, probably the easiest way, man. And thank you so much for having me, is all I can say. I love what you do. I've been following you since I think the first day I opened my account, I was following you. So sweet. <laughs> yeah it's fun social media is a wild ride dude it's fun um just getting on the waves i learn so much every day from just what people are doing on social media and just the current consciousness and where to really take action you know and i feel like this is really going to help people and hopefully bring a lot of awareness to just mental health and i would love to have you back on the show um soon so we can really just talk about that for the full you know for the full hour and go deep with that because that's something that I just really want to keep reiterating and driving home to people. Yeah. No, absolutely. And like I mentioned, it's something that's dear to me. So thank you so much for allowing me to talk on that subject and, and, you know, putting, shedding some light on something that we got to remove the stigma on. So thanks again, man. Awesome, brother. Well, thank you again, Christian. Namaste. Enjoy the rest of your day, brother. Thank you. You too. Guys, I want to thank you so much for being here for the first ever Owl Spiritual Podcast, first ever Owl Spiritual YouTube video. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and listening. If you guys want to follow me or subscribe on any of my platforms, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok are all at Owl Spiritual. If you're listening to this on podcast, you can definitely check out the video format on YouTube. I want to thank you again for joining. As always, continue on your journey within and have a blessed day.